Imagine as a resident of Scotland, you were paid a wage from the state each month, straight into your bank account. It is given to you unconditionally, meaning you don't need to do anything to receive it or to retain it. A minimum amount paid to you is a right of citizenship for your share of the natural resources of your country. Most of the means-tested benefits would be scrapped altogether. Basic income trials are coming to Scotland. But what is basic income? It's not a handout. It's not a benefit. It's something which everybody gets. So everyone gets a set amount of money. We have to define what that will be. Uh, and that's given to you and it removes any stigma of people being unemployed. Uh, it feels as if they're getting handouts. And really, really importantly, you're not penalised by then going out and getting work. So basic income is a very old idea, but I think one that uh, seems to have found its place just now in, in the world. And it's the idea that every citizen receives a regular, secure, unconditional payment from the state directly into their bank account every month, which can help to keep them uh, more secure in their planning, their finances, and their ability to cope with uh, shocks that may come up. Basic income is a win win situation. <laughs> It was like a surprise, total surprise. Like a bit of like winning a lottery suddenly, like without even knowing that you were enrolled. <laughs> for it. Okay, so basic income is a very, very simple idea. It's the idea that we give every individual in society a little bit of money, a very modest amount, but we give it unconditionally. So that means no means testing, no work testing, no willingness to work not telling anyone what they have to use the money for and so on and so forth. It's very simple. Yeah. It's a different sort of society that I'm looking for. Annual poverty statistics show a sharp increase in poverty in Scotland uh, and in particular an increase in child poverty. We shouldn't have so many people living in poverty in a country as rich as ours. We're one of the wealthiest countries in the world. So there's a stark choice facing us. And of course, as we get additional policy making powers here in Scotland, we look innovatively at how we use them. Income tax is one of the recent powers we've got and we're looking just now at how we use income tax responsibly uh, but also progressively and in a way that helps us to support the kind of society we want to be. And that's the fundamental point here. Economic policy is a means to an end. It's the means by which you allow people to live happy, fulfilling lives. It could be the first authentic basic income scheme pilot in the world. We've got three now four councils in Scotland want to host a basic income pilot scheme. That's uh, Fife was the first, followed by City of Glasgow, North Ayrshire, and recently the City of Edinburgh wants to host a project. And I think in the end it's going to have to be one project with different arms to it, not just four separate pro pilot projects. In Glasgow we've been doing a feasibility study since um, the beginning of this year. And now the Scottish Government has announced that it will fund further work um, in different parts of Scotland, including Glasgow. So the feasibility study that we have um, will allow uh, give us a basis then for taking forward further work funded by the Scottish Government, which is extremely welcome and that will help us to really drill down into these questions and these issues about how we tackle these long-term inequalities in Glasgow. If the idea of basic income sounds too radical, something that would never work, Welcome to Finland. They began a two-year experiment with basic income in January. 2,000 citizens were chosen at random to receive the basic income. And I travelled there to meet some of the people involved in the trials. Basic income is a, a social welfare form, but it's less bureaucratic than the current system, and it's more... Uh, equal than the current system because it's the same for all, all people. It's a, it gives you freedom and you, when you have freedom you it reflects to everything you do. That kind of uh, hope that basic income produces is the best uh, outcome by what it can generate. Mika told me that if I had met him a year ago before basic income his life and prospects were very different to now. 
or where I couldn't sleep at night. I was always thinking where kind of uh, I could get a job or doing something. And it was uh, very frustra frustrating at that time. And basic income kind of freed me, if you can say that. Everyone was living at the edge and uh, emotions was, uh, were very short. Uh, I could get angry for very um, not so important things. And it's, um, I'm becoming a better, better person now when I can uh, afford doing things, even for small things. I can focus more of my for my family because when I was unemployed, I always have to uh, doing the applications for jobs and uh, doing things that uh, wouldn't cost anything. We went museum museums only when it was was free. We never went to the movies, or if we went, we have to uh, plan it three months ahead or something like that. Now we can go movies if we wish to. After receiving the basic income, Mika found a job. Starting at my new career, uh, I'm at the very lowest bottom of the salaries, and basic income kind of uh, raises me temporarily, and it, it gives me a chance to focus on learning new things, so I don't have to uh, push so hard. I, I can focus on uh, what should I be learning? The basic income won't drop while you work, and you can do one hour or 100 hour hours for working, and you can still keep the same amount of the basic income. It will encourage people to do more work, and it will encourage them to take any work they can get, even for temporary or part-time jobs even the uh, lowest possible job and the low paid jobs because it benefits them. That kind of uh, hope that basic income produces is the best uh, outcome by what it can generate. For example, in Finland when you start your own ent enterprise, uh, you won't receive any benefits from the state uh, system. Uh, so this kind of uh, basic income would be a uh, uh, very good idea for those who start their first enterprise at first time. There are of course some people who just would uh, take money and watch the TV, but in the long run I think that they are not so common as people accept. I think that the basic income will be the universal suffrage of this century that in the year 2100 they will keep it, it's a, it's a normal thing to do, that everyone gets it, and in the, they won't, they read only at the history books that it, it started 100 years ago, and, but they won't, they will take it as a granted, as it should be, because uh, keeping the minimum living standards is a human right, and the basic income is the cheapest way to achieve that. That's the main difference. The, the whole uh, the current system is expensive and it wastes people's potential. And it's because that is uh, unequal and basic income won't be that. An hour outside of Helsinki lives Rosa. She also receives the basic income and I visited her at her apartment where she lives with her two small children and her husband. It was a, for me, it was a surprise because I was with the kids on maternity leave um, and you had to be listed in Finland as an unemployed person and I was not. Uh, but I probably just enlisted like a week before they uh, you know, chose the people or something because my kids uh, started daycare and then I enlisted as uh, unemployed. The letter came and it was taken that now you would be chosen for this and all and, and yeah, it was nice, definitely. I mean, it doesn't make such a big difference that suddenly you're rich or something, <laughs> but it gives you that kind of like a, a stress-free uh, leverage that you can like you can afford to go out to eat when you need or if you want or um, 
uh, maybe if you have daycare costs, they're not such a big in- impact anymore. You can afford to put your kids in the daycare or, or get some nanny help, something, because you can afford it now and, and things like that. Rosa has noticed the difference basic income has made to her family in terms of the pace of life. But it has made our life a bit easier, more relaxed in the sense that we don't have to count every penny. And of course, that now I was working uh, full time until uh, um, three weeks back, maybe a month back, when I was able to apply for the partial parenting leave, which means I went from 38 hours to 30 hours, like 80 percent from full time, which is quite easier for the family. And my salary didn't drop too much because of the basic income. All the children, of course, they don't understand any of it. But yeah, of course, it's, uh, it's both of us feel um, more relaxed in, in financial terms, like less uh, stress for both of us. In in sense, of course, it changed when I started working because I mean, a cafeteria worker, the salary is not like uh, very big or anything. So getting five hundred and sixty on top of that is of course nice. But for the basic income, you don't do anything. It's just out of the income. It just comes. <laughs> Is like it's not so stressful right now. You know we can uh, can I, uh, don't have to you know budget so much. We can think okay, okay, okay kids need shoes. We can buy them. We don't have to think like when can we buy them? When we'll have the money? And we don't have to depend on the credit card and things like that. That's the biggest like thing uh, benefit. Rosa said that if she was to receive basic income permanently, it would allow her to pursue her long term dream of starting up her own business. If I got basic income, yeah, I could choose uh, the job like I had passion for, that I like really loved, liked. Now that Rosa is receiving the basic income, she and her husband plan to fulfil a family wish. I'm hoping that if I may get leave from work enough, we will probably go and visit my husband's family in India, where we haven't been able to go for, I think it's the third year that we have not visited with the children. My husband has gone a few times, um, but yeah, so I'm hoping that we can. It's not about money this time, it's about the time, if I can get the time off of work. Uh, yeah. Marduka is the Director of Change Management at the Kila Government and she is managing the basic income experiment. The income experiment started in the beginning of this year and will last for, for two years, so in the end of 2018. So for two years these 2,000 people that are randomly selected uh, will be giving every month, the second bank day of the month, the basic income of uh, 560 euros. It's uh, kind of like you don't lose anything in this experiment, so it's uh, it's uh, something that we had to guarantee that you get, you'll be get, getting the same amount of money that you would get without this experiment. So we had to do that because the constitutional board said that uh, we have to do guarantee the people the money that they would get if they are not in this experiment. And we are guaranteeing it, so nobody is losing anything. I think as a bureaucrat, I think that you need to have you know, kind of like that, uh, run things smoothly. You have to have bureaucracy is at to some point, but but uh, this is actually a free bureaucracy, and it's very good. No work at all for us, so it's really good. There have been lots and lots of the interviews that I have been giving. You know, from you know, from uh, reporters coming to here from all over the world, so U.S., Korea, Japan, China, all you all over Europe, Poland, Slovenia, France, Italy, Switzerland. Uh, it, and I've been in Dublin, and I've been in uh, in uh, in um, Paris, in OECD conference, and now Scotland is here <laughs> to talk about this experiment. I'm very really excited to hear about the uh, the Scottish Scotland's uh, experiment. Well, one of the answers it seems to me is a guaranteed annual income, a guaranteed minimum income for all people and for all families. Of our country. Basic income isn't a new idea. In fact, it is a very old idea. It goes back 500 years to Thomas More, a journalist, lawyer and philosopher. He first wrote about the concept of basic income in his fictional book Utopia. More recently, it has become popular with a number of famous faces, including tech billionaires who believe basic income is the only way forward. We should explore ideas like universal basic income to make sure that everyone has a cushion to try new ideas. There will be fewer and fewer jobs that a robot cannot do better. What to do about mass unemployment? This is going to be a massive social challenge. Um, 
And I think ultimately we will have to have some kind of universal basic income. I don't think we're going to have a choice. Universal basic In, income. Universal basic income. I think it's going to be necessary. So it's mean that unemployed people will be paid across the globe. Yeah. Because there is no job. Machine robots is taking over. Um, that, that's simply the, the. And I want to be clear that these, these are not uh, things that I think that I wish would happen. These are things, simply things that I think probably will happen. I am Deal Like to introduce myself with sign language. My name is Asimo. Uh, I think also for a lot of those the, the kind of tech entrepreneurs in the States, they're very aware that some of their inventions, uh, the algorithms they're bringing in, the AI they're working on, that is going to most dramatically impact on the jobs and working lives of, of some people. And I think there's an element of recognising they need to do something proactively now to address that. Um, rather than wait for the pitchforks at the, the door when they seem to be that they're to blame for particular impacts across people's lives. And, you know, I'm, I'm saying I'm cynical about that. I think it's another part of the argument. It's another part of the debate. And actually what we've seen with um, profound technological or industrial change previously is that even if people are aware it's going to impact on certain communities, there's not really been a huge amount of care. It's happened anyway for the, the greater good of the economy. So at least in one sense, there are there are folks starting to look at it from within those echelons. And I think, again, there a lot of them are people who are putting their money where their mouth is. So uh, in the US, a lot of the work that's taking place around basic income has involved large-scale philanthropic, uh, philanthropic donations from tech entrepreneurs and others. And I think at least they are trying to explore those ideas. One country in America has had a form of basic income for over 40 years. When Alaska discovered its oil in the 70s, the government of Alaska set up a fund to share the dividends from the oil with all its citizens. Every resident there receives approximately $2,000 each year, or $8,500 for a family of four. This money is paid straight into their bank account, and they have been receiving it since 1976. Some people argue that, say for example in Alaska, there is a scheme that looks like a basic income because everyone gets it. You know, you have to be a few years in residence, but then you can claim to it. And the scheme is funded by, it's basically the oil and mineral licenses. So they basically had a pot of money, they put it separate, and some of that money gets paid out to everyone, every single individual in an unconditional manner. So it looks like a basic income, but the only thing is, you know, it's only paid once a year. And it's about sort of a thousand, between a between thousand and two thousand dollars. So it's a little bit of a Christmas bonus, if you like. So some people say that's, you know, it's close enough to a basic income, so we see it working. You know, it doesn't feel like the state is on the side of, of ordinary people anymore, if it ever was. Um, and, but there's also, we can see across the West, particular right now, there's a real crisis in confidence between the individual and the state. You can see, you can see it in the electoral results all over the list, what's going on. People are angry, and the right to be angry, in my view, and I think the basic income, a basic income approach might be something that could rebuild that relationship, because it turns a situation where right now the state is asking people to jump through all sorts of hoops to get a few quid to get through the day, it's not, not even enough to live on actually in many cases in terms of the welfare benefit system right now. And that people haven't been jumped through awful hoops, so they've been really quite humiliated and degraded going through it. And I, it's, I think basically income can turn that relationship on its head. Rather than saying you owe the state or, or the state assumes that you're on the take or you're, you're a scoundrel, it turns it around and it says it puts you in control, it puts the individual in control and the state becomes the servant of the people rather than actually master. And I think that that is an incredibly attractive thing. It certainly is for me, and it seems to be uh, drawing support um, across the political spectrum, actually. Of course, not everyone is a fan of basic income. Some worries centre around what could be lost if basic income became a permanent feature. So right now, if if somebody goes out to work, there is, there is a minimum that the employer has to pay for them. And the reason why there's a minimum 
is because we have won an argument about what it is that people might need to live on. Now, the minimum wage is too low. It's not set at the rate of the living wage, but it is in some ways a conversation about what people might need when they go out to work. If you already have a basic income that's coming from the state, what is the argument that is for the minimum wage? And we're concerned about that, and we're concerned about how employers might use it to push down to get back to a situation where people are being paid £2 an hour, £2.50 an hour, like they were just a few years ago, and still are in some parts of the economy where the minimum wage doesn't apply, like for the ferries, for example. So this is a very real concern that we have, and one that we would have to be clear that people understood why we were having a, having a basic income and how it interacted with those rights in the labour market and it not be used to erode them. Professor Paul Spicker is an expert on the welfare and benefits system and has yet to be convinced on basic income being the way forward for Scotland. Now, I accept the argument made by Guy Standing that basically we can afford this if we want to, but where is that money going to go to? And what it's mainly going to go to, as I've already said, is not to the benefit of people currently on very low incomes who are in receipt of benefit. It's going to go on the others. It's going to go on people on middle income, for example. People on a higher income will get it reclaimed through higher tax brackets. It'll go to cover some of the people who currently ought to get benefits and don't, which is worthwhile. But... We're talking about massive amounts of money going, in principle, to a group that excludes the people who we most want to help and most want to protect. So the fundamental problem is a distributive problem. It's a question, is basic income the right way to use the money we have, or should we be looking for ways to get money much more effectively to people on lower incomes. I, I think there are two sides to it though, and I think one of the things is that we do have to ask some quite serious questions and we do have to do a lot of testing um, and feasibility testing before we, we go down that route. Um, I think that the very attractive idea about it is that it does liberate people to make choices in their lives um, that are not dictated by um, the demands of a welfare state that is structured around um, quite punitive measures, that's structured around forcing people to take various steps, um, to, uh, to constantly be applying for work or demonstrating that they're applying for work. Um, at the moment, if you walk through many communities in the city and across the country, you see a lot of people very, very stressed. Um, so people who are out of work who are uh, stressed, people who have other disabilities who are stressed because of what they're being put through. People who are in work who are very stressed because they're working longer for less. Um, you have people who haven't had um, other than those at the very top, or at least uh, people haven't had pay rise for a decade. Um, increasingly people at work are having to rely on charity to feed their families and feed themselves. That's not, that's not the sign of a healthy society. I think something like basic income can change that narrative. I, I, I think if we can get to a situation where we put, put a few food banks at prisons, I'd be very happy indeed. I think we need to ask how can we use the money we've got most effectively in order to have the best effect for people. We can't simply scrap the benefit system and start again, not without causing massive hardship to lots of people with serious problems. A lot of the principle behind basic income is that you can stop existing benefits and do it this way instead. But it's also an illusion that the, all of the existing problems are going to be there because people's lives just change too rapidly. Most simplifications are oversimplifications. I'd like to think there wouldn't be any... People wouldn't look down on anyone else if they had to rely on it, but um, maybe everybody would try and do a bit more to support themselves. No, um, I'm very practical. I'd probably pay my rent with it. Um, I think I'd firstly go to pay the rent to make sure I had money for food coming in. I don't know if I'd do anything lavish with it, to be honest. And it seems to be working. The countries that have piloted it, it seems to be working quite well. So. Um, just one less thing to have to worry about. If you leave a job, if you're on a short-term contract, 
um, and then you're, you've got that maybe three or four weeks where you're looking. It might help people stop getting into a hole or bad debt during that time. And then they find when they're eventually working, they're spending all their time trying to pay that debt back. So, I think it would be a huge change for society in general. It would just completely change everybody's thinking about it. Um, but I think there will be a lot of people against it. Uh, I think it would probably keep, just keep you on the borderline with poverty. Um, it's not really a lot of money, is it? Let's be honest. So you definitely have to get a bit more than that if you wanted to be able to actually do anything with your money. I think it would be much better. There's no excuse for anybody not to have enough to get by. Um, and then over and above that, you can try and, you know, if you if you want to earn more money, you can try and do that. If you don't, then I guess everybody's accounted for. I'm not sure how it would be in terms of costs, if it would cost more than what we do at the moment or possibly less because you wouldn't have the bureaucracy, I don't know. Well, I mean, like, like anything, I would have to ask where the money comes from. Um, is it coming out of the taxpayer? Is it coming out of our taxes? Would the taxes go up? I think that's a, a reasonable question to ask. Well, actually, there's three ways in which you could pay for it. The one way is what they've done in Alaska or what they've done in Norway, where they basically say, look, this is money that belongs to everyone, right? Therefore, everyone becomes a shareholder and everyone should be a beneficiary. And that's like a social dividend, you know? So in Norway, they were very smart. And in Alaska, they were smart and they have that. I think there's a few things about the money. Firstly, it's amazing as a society, we find that we can pay for stuff we want to pay. Uh, it's not that we don't have money, it's about how we choose to spend it. I think the second thing is that we've seen a massive cut in terms of the level of public spending in the UK. Uh, and actually I think from a lot of perspectives that doesn't make much economic sense with the trials we're facing just now but also does give room for there is space there that, that used to exist for the role of the state. Yeah, because we, we make the poverty. If we make it then we can unmake it. The world should be ours to design as we want to live in it. Who would design a world where so many people have got so much wealth or so few people have got so much wealth and so many people live in poverty. So many people still living in hunger in the 21st century. We could, we could feed the world. I'm not going to sing it to you. But we could feed the world. We could power the world. There's enough solar energy. There's enough natural resources. We got it very wrong somewhere along the line. But it's not within, it's not out with our capabilities of mankind to change that around. But it's like living in a work, it's like, it's like, winning an election, you have to convince enough people that that's the thing you want to vote for. And when all the power and all the media lives in the hands of so few very rich people, then that message isn't necessarily going to filter through. Taxpayers get substantial benefits through tax loopholes. And if these were shared around more fairly, we could find it much more easy to deliver a basic income to everybody. I think there's something very fundamentally different in a society where you know people are not living out on the streets are not having to go to you know food banks or not having to worry day after day whether the next day they're going to be able to basically feed their kids or you know if they can feed their kids it might be because they have to skip meals i mean i find that just utterly undignified and and i can't believe that a rich country and Britain is a rich country, right? The UK is rich, never mind the crisis, never mind all the problems. Like, there is money out there. I can't believe it, how many people are suffering through this. Uh, what I'm not convinced of is the idea that a universal basic income, a basic income which is there for everyone, is the best way that we can go about this, or the way that we can achieve our objectives. Particularly hit a point where jobs for life, security is gone, and actually the very concept that work is the best route out of poverty doesn't exist anymore. The growth of in-work poverty uh, has been immense. I'm so disappointed that so many people haven't latched onto it. You know, at least to give it the investigation it deserves. The welfare system was established over 70 years ago to provide cradle to grave care when needed but most agree it is now too overly complicated and no longer fit for purpose. With many experts insisting it must evolve to meet the ever-changing needs of a complex society today. 
Uh, and basic income was one of those things, when you look at it and you don't you go, well, yeah, yeah. Well, but why has it failed? And people go, well, it hasn't really failed. It's never really been tried properly. I do think that um, in due course, we will be both independent um, and that it's entirely possible that we will also have um, a universal basic income model in Scotland. Um, and I would like it to free people, to give them choice over their lives and to have financial security. That's the sort of society that I would like for Scotland, for our generation and future generations to come. Domestic income experiments are small, partial, they will be disputed. Doesn't matter what they say, they're going to be disputed on either side. And I'm not convinced that the basic income, whilst the intention is good, we've really got to think about what we can do effectively now. Good luck for Scotland for basic income. Um, I think that you are very wise to choose this. And probably you are doing it better than it, it's done in Finland. Challenge poverty in Scotland. I we can! Challenge poverty in Scotland. I we can! Who doesn't like free money? You know the idea of bootstraps. It's like, we all have to pull ourselves up at our bootstraps. And I'm like, well, first you need to give people bootstraps, you know? Give people bootstraps, let them pull themselves up, let them lead their lives. There you go. That's it.